Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's Hand, Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to share with you today some uh, dreams, but scripture really, about renewing your mind. But anyhow, this is the dream I had, and I'm going to dive into the scriptures. Um, I had this dream, I, I've been writing it down. I had this dream, Jesus was standing before me, and he spoke and said, He was reforming my mind to be conformed into his image and transformed by the renewing of my mind through the washing of the water of the word and the blood of the Lamb. And then I got three scriptures. Ephesians 5.26. This is pretty key and critical, guys, and crucial. Um, a little bit earlier on in the context, it's talking about husbands and wives and loving your wives, but then it's talking about, you know, connotating that, Jesus connotating that towards his bride, to his church. And he says, so it's kind of both, but that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that she should be holy and without blemish oh by the way happy veterans day thank you all you veterans that served um i forgot to add that at the beginning but anyhow um i'll add a little bit more about that too but thank you for your honor and your service just your, your, your selfless sacrifice for a great country that we live in. Not the best, probably, probably not, but a great country, and it can be even greater with that with Jesus at the helm. So anyhow, um, let's get back into the word. Um, he might sanctify and cleanse her by the washing of the water of the word. That he might present to him, her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But she should be holy and without blemish. Kind of strange in this political, messy, worldly climate we live in right now. He wants something pure. Turn on any news network and you can go to, from CNN to Fox or whichever branch or side or pick one messy. They thrive on dirt and trash and garbage. Polluting our mind. Why do I want to waste my brain cells on that? I turn, turn on the news because I want to see the political climate, see what's going on. So you, you know, I do want to know. I don't want to be in the dark. Of course not. I want to, you know, what to pray for, who to pray for, all of those kind of things. I, you know, I don't want to be ignorant either. I want my lead, you know, I want this country to be blessed. But he's trying to get our mind off of into the spiritual realm because all this other stuff really, honestly, kind of is nonsense. You know? Because he told me that the message is, and I'm not there all the way there yet, I'm still working on the delivery side of it, but he said, plow right down the middle. There's a left and a right kind of in the church, too, you know? A lot of charismatic and then there's a lot of denominational stuff and a lot of stuff in between. Rules, regulations, right, wrong, judgment on one side, holiness on one side, and holiness is, it has to be there. But are you holy if you wear earrings or don't? I have a mustache or don't? I mean, I've heard all kinds of stuff, you know? It's like, man, guys, okay. But then there's the other side. Love, 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 and... and you know, that's main, one of the main themes of the scripture, John 3.16, for God so loved the world. That's his plan. But people jump off on the grace bandwagon and say, it's, you know, you're free and do whatever the hell you want. Excuse my language. That's not true either. But he's trying to renew our mind. So, that's some of the messages that I minister on. Who's your source? God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Bible... I don't even listen to me. I'm not even. I'm just directional. I'm a vessel, directing you to the soul, to that, to Jesus. Bounce it off of Him. Ask Him, what's going on? Use a little neology. Me too. I'm not. This message is for me too. I'm not. You know, up here at the top of the mountain, hollering down at y'all. I am just a vessel. I ain't got issues. I need help too. I need God's direction too. I need Jesus, the Holy Ghost, 
the Word. I need all of it. He's trying to renew our minds. So, let him. Renew it with the washing of the water of the Word. And stump, jump into another scripture. And then it'll all start to make sense. Romans 8, 29. I'm going to try to keep this short. I've been trying to keep them short, and it's, it's kind of hard, because it's like, man, God, i got so much to say. And this one was a dream that I had two weeks ago, too, with Romans. But let's go into Romans 8.29. This was a dream months ago, long months ago, 8.29. And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord, or are called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of of the son of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestinated, these he called; whom he called, these he also justified; and whom he justified, these he also glorified. That's like a lot of the messages that the Lord's giving me all wrapped up in one. How were his glory? Jesus was his glory. Ask me, I'll send you that what I got, because I'm in the process of writing another book that the Lord just. I mean, he's been downloading a lot. The dream that I had a couple weeks ago was Romans 8.27. I saw that written above our fireplace. But then I read this too. But he's conforming us into his image so that we can be in glory, so that we can shine. He's transforming our minds. So we're set upon the city that's set upon the hill. Our thoughts and our brain cells, even in the natural, are on him. All this other stuff that's swirling around us is junk, guys. Kind of, you know, a lot of it. I mean, like I said, turn on the news or, you know, shootings everywhere. And just, you know, America's kind of in deep doo doo, but I love this country. And thank you for the veterans that serve this country. And we can turn this around, but it's going to be turned around by us changing our minds, renewing our minds, resetting our minds on things above instead of things in this world, you know. I mean, we can. This country can become an idol if we if we let it. The love of the country. Sorry, it can be. I want a free nation too. I want to be able to talk on YouTube or do whatever. But you know, being a true Christian sometimes does take a little bit of sacrifice. You do get the stink eye from people, even in church sometimes. You know, go stand up in most mainstream churches and say, we're going to heal the sick. Everybody wants to do that because there's a lot of sick people. Raise the dead and cast out demons. Man, that 100, 100 people will dial 911 and the sheriff will come and tell you, you got to leave because you're disrupting service. Well, yeah, you probably are a little bit out of order. I get it. You know, might not be the wisest thing to do. I get it. You know, but the just of what I'm saying is when we got want to get us steeped in the spirit and the renewing of our mind, people look at us like we're nuts. I'm not nuts, guys. I just want to be like him. I want to be like Jesus. Who else do you want to be like the devil? I mean, get a grip, guys. It's time to take that stand for Jesus. I'm going to read this last scripture, and so that I can kind of end it and. Let me find it here and kind of tie all this together. The transformation is Romans 12 and 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, don't don't let all this stuff twist us, you know. I get it. I understand, you know. Part of the, what the Lord told me to do about preaching down the middle, I understand, you know. I don't get all the revelations. I don't probably, you know, I don't know it enough that, that I should. There is a judgment piece out there. I mean, read the Bible. I used to sit under a pastor that would be like preaching and he'd be like, you don't like that page? Tear it out of the Bible. It's in there. Okay? Great. Awesome. 
But the message of the hour is Jesus is saying, come on, come on, come on, come out. Separate yourself. Don't be sidetracked. A thousand could fall at your right side, ten thousand at your left. He's got it, guys. If we let him, it's choice. Businesses could fail, but yours could succeed and explode. Because we're going to be that city that's set upon a hill. Judgment's all around us, guys. I mean, look at my message on economic collapse. I saw in the news the other day, somebody was boasting about how America's worth $11 trillion. I could be wrong. You can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but somebody said that. I, I forget who it was. It was somebody on the news. And I'm like, okay, but yet we're $20 trillion in debt. We're broke, guys. You can't blame any past presidents. Or Congress was just as guilty. Bush, $5 trillion. Obama, $10 trillion. Trump's on his way to even more. Brilliant ideas in mind, and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. They never really hardly talk about balancing the budget. They never talk about paying it back. A country shut down for five weeks during Obama. Laid off people, unnecessary furloughed people. Unnecessary. They eventually got paid, but it's like, man, guys, you know. It's right at our doorstep. You know, there's so many things that could flip, change, unfold, turn. But our focus and our mind needs to be on Him. Because it is a short time. Maybe it's maybe it's 500 years. I don't know. Maybe it's five minutes. Do you know that? No, because He said no man would know the hour or the time. But we know the season. So, the season is to change your mind, transform your mind. How you treat people. He told me, this is, this is what I'm going to end with. He told me, I've been having a lot of dreams, scriptures. I mean... I'll get a scripture and dream and I'll have to look it up, you know? My mind is, my physical mind does need reforming and transforming. I'm old, for one. Not real old, but probably too many drugs as a child. Two. So I just, my memory's not there, guys. It's just not. I can't, I don't know all the addresses. I can look them up. When he gave me Romans 8, 20, 27. I had to go look it up. I don't even know what it says. But he, but he, but this was one I had, and he said, and I had one two weeks later. I'm gonna end with this. I promise. He said, Colossians 3:16 is just as important as John 3:16. When we read all the Colossians 3:16, a lot of it's how we entreat each other. But 3.16 talks about how we should admonish, teach one another in songs and hymnals and praises under the Lord. And earlier on it talks about if we have fought with our brother, we should forgive him just as Christ forgave us. It's a deep, deep scripture. So how are we treating each other? You know? Prophet is such a misused word in this religious fervor and clamor and hierarchy and better than and it's just people trying to position and jockey some of some of the people are they gloat over the judgment piece of it why would you be happy that someone's getting destroyed whether it's their church their life whatever where's god in that where's jesus in that what you, you're making mockery of the cross but at the same time, you can't say, okay, everything goes because Jesus forgave all your sins. Of course he did. But he said, many, many will come to me and, and try to enter in. And he'll say, depart from me because your work was of iniquity. Look at the five wise and the five foolish virgins. Well, you know, some say it signifies a church. Some say it doesn't. But whatever. It signifies something. Half of them didn't make it in. Didn't we Cast out devils in your name, heal the sick, rise the dead, do all kinds of stuff. Depart from me. I never knew you. That's where the renewing of your mind comes in. Get in tune with what God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Word, which is your living example and your road map. Don't you think God could take care of a book? You know, this is what I'm going to end with. You know? Time to step up, guys, a little bit. I got so many things I want to share and say, but I'm still, like I said, working on delivery because I don't want to get it wrong. 
90% of what I say is probably right. There's probably some error in there. You can correct me if you want. Comment on it. Whatever. I, I don't want my opinion in there. I don't want my flesh in there. I am pointing a finger, but I'm directing you to Him. To God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Word. Dig into it. Who's your source? But right now I'm having dreams. It's like, man, God, I am going to spit them out and share them and proclaim them and do what you tell me to do. Just got back on a 14-day trip. Told me to go to this little podunk town in Pennsylvania. I had to Google it, and it did exist. That was just one piece of it, but 1,800 miles away, days of driving, thousands of dollars in hotel bills and gas, and why? Do I want to go there? And he gave me one specific person to go to seek for, and and we did, and we got there, and it was specific and exactly like the Lord said, and ministered to somebody for over an hour, one one man for over an hour, sat and listened to us, cried because they don't they don't, you know, a lot, a lot of people aren't hearing about the love of Jesus. That's what we need to portray. That's where we need to be. Our mind changed. Christ and Him crucified, the hope of glory. Now all this junk that's going on. So, lastly, I know people filling up their garage with five-gallon buckets of beans and rice because there's a famine coming. Well, probably, very highly likely, could be. I'm going to go to their house and get a free meal, but I'm, I'm kind of like of the attitude of like, okay, great. But you better start five gallon buckets of water to cook them. And then what are you going to do? How are you going to cook them? Are you going to get an open fire? Are you going to live off the land? Power could be out for months. What are we going to do then if the electricity goes off? I mean, I want to put my faith and trust in Jesus that he's going to see me through it and my family through it. I'm not telling you not to get prepared. I'm not saying that. But preparing the spirit, preparing the word, preparing your mind, preparing, put those things up above. Where's your treasure at? Where's your heart at? Put it up above and not on this carnal world and not on the things that are going on all around. You know, wars, rumors of wars could be, could happen before this message even gets out. People talk all kinds of crazy stuff. Lastly, I'm going to end with this because it is Veterans Day, you know. It's time for us to get, you know, our hope and trust in Him. Many men and women sacrificed their lives, not just death lives, not life and death. Of course, I'm not discounting that at all. That was the ultimate sacrifice. Some people put their whole careers in it, their whole livelihood. Sometimes the positions don't pay that good. They could have did other things. Most of it was out of, out of self-sacrifice. Same with the police officers. Now, they get down and trashed and talked about. And they deal with a lot of crap, guys. They see the dark, dark, dark side of this world. Talk to some of them. Man, some of their stories are like... But instead, we're like, this police shooting, that brutality, this and that. It's a small percentage, guys. It's a small... Yeah, that's not right. I get it. I understand. We need to weed that out. There is there is a little bit of cancerous in there. But don't shoot the whole body for it. Same with our soldiers, you know. I like John McCain. Maybe didn't agree with them on a lot of things. Some yes, some no. Didn't matter. He stood when I, I, I was a kid... But I remember Vietnam, and I remember the trash that went on, and I remember the divisiveness of it. Not a much different than the political climate today. A horrible time. Not a very good war. Politics, history still dissecting that. But he went. Because his country asked him to, and he stood, and he paid a sacrifice. He was in prison for a long time, you know? Why should we bash him for that? We should, you know? He... Stuck his neck out. And I thank you for the guys that are. And the gal, the, the women that are. Guys, gals. Sorry if I say it the wrong way. But that are standing. But anyhow. So we love you guys. But it's time to renew our mind. 
and get our mind focused on things of the Spirit and what God's doing and what Jesus is directing and the Holy Ghost is directing you to do. That's why I say send you the Comforter. If you're not filled with it, get filled with it. Because you know what? When something's filled with something, there's no room for something else. Sin and all this other stuff can kind of get, it gets shoved out. I still got some issues, some seen and some unseen. I'm still human. So well, someday I'll tell you about how much tailgaters irritate me. Still do. Maybe you're one of them. Rude, pushy people. It's like, man, do stupid things behind the wheel. But so, you know, we all can have issues and things. Maybe mistreating our wives or children or whatever, you know, or people in the church or whatever, you know. Sometimes we don't see things, you know. I'll end with, I'll end with this. I need a renewing in my mind. I took an offense to something someone said one day at church because they didn't see it and it wasn't the truth and it hurt and the things God showed me about it that they were thinking it hurt even more and I walked away and I was like man God I don't want to pick this up and be mad and a day or two went by but I did start getting mad and then my prayer was like let him see rightly let him see well that was a self-centered selfish prayer I just wanted to see my opinion and what I thought of it and the situation the way that I saw it. I didn't get a breakthrough and really turn it over to, to God. What's He trying to do in my heart out of it? And theirs. And pray for them and really mean it. Open up their heart of understanding, but open up mine too. What do I need to see? What part of the equation do I need to change? Where am I falling short on this? Joan Love. Change my, the renewing of my mind. Not easy to do, guys. I get it. I understand. But there it is. You know? So, anyhow, there it is. I got to, too. I'm not sitting on the seat as a scoffer and a mocker and downing everybody all around me and judging and all this other garbage because that's not me. I'm just directional and telling you what's coming from the Holy Spirit. And from God and Jesus and the wisdom from above, James 3.17, and entreating each other. And it's time to step up to the plate and let the world see His glory through us. Not for van vanity and puffed upness and I got this and I got that. You know, we put emphasis on stuff and world and positions and money and things. I get it. I understand it. Cost us thousands of dollars to get to Pennsylvania. I'd have gas. I'd have a decent car. I get it. I'm not narrow-minded. That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, one of the things Billy Graham said, it's not what you can do with, it's what can you do without. I think that's how he said it. So, you know, we, a lot of the stuff we don't even really need. You know? No, I want a nice house, of course. Our house is pretty nice, but I mean, you don't have to have a big, huge house or 18 cars. And Do you really need all that stuff? Not really. Do you really need a $20 million church when a $3 million church may suffice? That you could put that money to better use to actually helping people, changing people's lives? There's so many ways you can do it. Pray about it. Think about it. What's God telling you to do with it? It's His resources. Don't misuse them. Sorry. And I'm not saying, you know, because we minister at a homeless shelter. I'm not, we don't bring them food. There's other people that bring them food. But you could be a billionaire today, have $5 billion, and go out tomorrow and hit 10 homeless shelters throughout this nation, or 20, or whatever, and be broke the same day and still not a solved problem it'd still be there within hours or minutes you wouldn't even touch it so strategic you know specific what's God telling you to do with that I'm not a billionaire but you know I'm not even a millionaire like you guys everybody out there pretty much 
So, but he's working on our mind. He's renewing it, transforming it to be conformed in his image. There's just this change taking place. It's awesome, guys. When we let him. Peace, joy, happiness. When you get delivered for something, then who much is forgiven, much is required. But also, to who much is forgiven, there's just that level of grace, you know? You can really feel it. You really know it. I have a prodigal son experience. Look at my testimony, but I get the grace piece. Some people look at me like that's a victory. Some people look at me like that's this huge defeat. And who am I? I'm not. I'm whomever God makes me to be, and so are you. And we're all equal. I'll end it with this. Matthew, read Matthew 7, 20. About the equality. It cuts across all the crap that the world and the church puts on people. They have a purpose and a, and a reason that God selected us. Those that will. But there's also the wheat and chaff, tares, read in Romans, some vessels are created, uh, no, yeah, it's Romans 5, some are created for honor, some for dishonor. Some people aren't going to make it, guys. I'm targeting the ones that are. I want to edify and lift up the ones that are. I want to minister to the people that are, the people that have a heart to want to change. That's why it says don't cast your pearls before swines, you know, at least they trample them, you know? I need to minister on that one time because it's something God told me. Now, I, I, I'm 19 and witnessed to the wrong person and tried to hammer it into them and it turned out to be a big mess. I went away and repented and I said, God, I said, you send them. I'm not doing this very good. And now, when I go out on these trips all over the, from Dallas, all over the country, different places they sent us. We went to Illinois and all over the place. We went, just went to Pennsylvania, North Carolina all over the place because God told us to and it was awesome only for a handful of people maybe 15, 20 people but there were some awesome things that happened in those interceptions awesome in the Lord because He told us to go so renewing of our mind what is He telling you to do? you know we all have a purpose and a, a reason raising our kids not you know, there's so many different things, you know, you, I got to end it with this because this is getting too long and I'm sorry and I just need to make another video. So anyhow, um, I just, once I get going, I just can't stop, but I apologize for that. Maybe that's a flaw. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a strength. I don't know. But anyhow, we love you guys. Um, I'm going to make another video and just kind of tune in. Hopefully you watch this all in its entirety. Um comment please comment please share it with others please help me get this word out love you guys talk to you real soon um thanks for tuning in check out my other videos you can email me at steve youngstrom at yahoo.com got a awesome book about visions that the lord gave me uh, free no strings attached Email me your address and that's it. You'll never hear from me again. I'm nothing. I'm not going to ask for an offering. I'm not going to send you a bunch of junk. I'm not going to... Nothing. No strings attached. Or you can get it on Amazon for 15 bucks, 14, 15 bucks. But anyhow, email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com if you want to just comment or you can make a public comment on my YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. Talk to you real soon.